Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us here on Creme 2 News First at 4. I'm Whitney Ward. It is our team, our town, and could this be our year? It's certainly our time. We are less than 24 hours away now from the Zags first game of the NCAA tournament. Before we get to our team, though, in Portland, we want to quiz you on a little Bulldogs trivia. Gonzaga finished as the highest scoring offense in the nation by averaging how many points per game? Take a guess and we will tell you the answer here in the next five minutes right here on Krem 2. In the meantime, though, we want to turn things over directly to Brenna Green and Travis Green, who are live in Portland tonight as we get ready for the big game. Hi, guys. Hello, welcome to the Mona Center, the site of Gonzaga's first and most likely second round game this first round games this week in the NCAA tournament. They take on Georgia State tomorrow. Georgia State tomorrow, that's right. Yeah, and pretty much the whole season leading up to this moment here. But I think it's fair to say we've known Gonzaga would be in March Madness yeah. from before the season yeah. even began. Yes. But now March Madness has finally arrived. It's March, March Madness Eve. It's just so exciting. I mean, it's such, such a big moment for all of us. And, you know, we our whole season has been going towards this goal of uh, coming here and winning the national championship. So to finally be here and have the opportunity to get that started, I mean, it's really cool. Gonzaga, the top seed in the tournament, set to face 16th seeded Georgia State in the opening round. Number one seeds are 143-1 and one all time in the tournament. The Zags are making sure they don't overlook the Panthers and become the second to lose. When you start watching tape and, and uh, you know, some real apprehensiveness with uh, a Georgia State squad kind of scratching my head and shocked that they're a 16 seed. I, didn't, I don't really see that. Uh, and so we know we're in for a tough hard fought game and we're going to have to play very good to, uh, to move on. You know, they play through their guards, you know, like to get some threes up, you know, they're two bigs, they're tough guys, you know, they rebound, defend, all that. So, you know, they're a tough team and, uh, you know, they're definitely going to come to play. So we got to be ready tomorrow. For senior guard Rashir Bolton, Thursday marks the beginning of what enticed him most in deciding to finish his college career in Spokane. Uh, this is definitely the reason why I came here, you know, to, to make a tournament run and try and win a national championship. Um, so, you know, I'm excited to be here. Uh, I don't think, you know, I have a this is it feeling. It's kind of a more of like, you know, it's time now to, you know, play, you know, live out my dream. So, you know, I'm ready for it. And with the illustrious career Mark Few has had leading the Bulldogs, he knows what it takes to get where this team wants to be. He's proud of everything the group has accomplished thus far and is hoping it leads to the first championship in program history. This, this thing we start tomorrow is just a three week crapshoot, man. You got to be really good, but you got to be lucky too. Uh, and those are two different entities. Um, you know, we're at the point now where you're right. I mean, whether we haven't won it or whether we had won a championship, we want to win this thing as bad as anybody. Uh, but we're also, I feel, smart enough and balanced enough to really cherish uh, the accomplishment that we had, not only this year, but in years past. And I know last year's team had a really good shot at winning the title, but I think this year's probably has the best, if not, yeah, I'll say the best chance any Gonzaga team has had at winning a championship. Well, I mean, yeah, last year was last year was really special, yeah. but uh, the two teams are distinctly different. Just want to add one thing. You know who's practicing behind us right now? A team that Gonzaga fans are very familiar with, St. <laughs> <Saint> Mary's. <laughs> so yeah, we're just uh, we're just hanging out with the Gales here in Portland. Uh, now, later on in the show, there are a lot of Portland connections on this Gonzaga men's basketball team. I dive into a few of them, so make sure to tune in at 4.30 for that. Absolutely. For now, reporting from Portland, I'm Travis Green. She's Brenda Green for Crim2 Sports. Thank you very much. And this is the first NCAA tournament where sports betting in Washington is legal. But there are still some restrictions on who you can actually bet on. Our own Ian Smay is joining us now with more on who you can and can't bet on as the big dance begins. Hi, Ian. Hey, Whitney. I spoke with the casino's director of table games earlier today about the sports book's first NCAA tournament. They are excited for people to place bets at the turf club as the big dance gets underway in earnest tomorrow. But there's at least one team on the men's side and two teams on the women's side. You won't be placing bets on at any point during the tournament. State regulations prohibit people from betting on in-state college athletic teams. That means you can't place a bet on the Gonzaga men's or women's teams or the Washington State University women's team as they are making their way through the tournament. You can still bet on games with, an, with other teams during March Madness. Northern Quest's director of table games hopes that in the future, the casino can offer betting on even more games.
So with the regulations, we're not allowed to bet on, on the in-state teams, which we have a couple in. Um, unfortunately, you know, we're supportive of the regulations, but also hopeful that uh, it'll eventually turn it over or, or get overturned to, to allow it, um, like we've seen in other jurisdictions. Pendell says the Turf Club is opening an hour earlier than normal starting tomorrow, as they expect a lot of people placing bets on the tournament. Like other sporting events, there are various bets people can place on the different games. Coming up at 5 and 6 o'clock tonight, I'll have more on what bets you can place on the NCAA tournament and what people are saying as they place those bets. For now, in the newsroom, Ian Smay, Krem 2 News. Ian, thank you very much. And whether sports betting is your style or not, you can always enter our bracket challenge here at Krem 2 for a chance to win some pretty amazing prizes. It's free to enter. All you have to do is head over to Krem.com and click on our 2022 March bracket challenge. You can also text the word March to 509-448-2000 and we will send you the links straight to your phone. By the way, Northern Quest will be giving away weekly vouchers for free pizza from Papa, Papa Murphy's if you are able to beat our sports director Brenna Green and her bracket through each round of the tournament and there will also be a grand prize winner who will receive a one night stay at the resort plus a $50 gift card to Epic and another $50 gift certificate to Windfall. You have until 915 tomorrow morning to enter that competition. And as Gonzaga gets ready to make its 23rd consecutive NCAA tournament run, we are betting and getting you ready for the big game. We're live from Portland for a Bulldog Madness special right here on Creme 2 and that airs tonight at 7 o'clock. Meanwhile, the WSU men's basketball team facing off against Santa Clara last night in the NIT. As a team, the Cougs made 10 three-pointers and defeated Santa Clara 63-50, to which means they will advance to the second round now of the tournament. That will start on the 19th. We are still waiting on times to be announced, and we will let you know just as soon as those are decided. And just a few minutes ago, we asked you some Bulldog trivia. So do you think you know the answer? Gonzaga finished as the highest scoring offense in the nation by averaging how many points per game? The answer? The Zags averaged 87.8 points per game. If you got that right, make sure and text us at 509-448-2000. And one last reminder, Gonzaga will take on Georgia State University in Portland tomorrow. Crime 2 will be there as the game kicks off and the Zags make their next NCAA championship run. That tip off is at 115. You can watch it on TNT. All right, we're going to take a quick break from the Zags headlines and turn things over to weather. And I think it was pretty much universal outside. Everyone was enjoying the sunshine that we saw today. Jeremy Legu has more on. Hey, do we, I guess you have the answer for us. Is there more sunshine in the forecast? Uh, yes. Okay. But there's also a little bit of rain. We got a little bit of everything in, say, the next, oh, 30 hours. Let's walk you through it right now. We sit at 49 degrees, knocking on the door of 50. Are we going to get there? Well, we already have, but it is a beautiful day. 50 in Coeur d'Alene and Sandpoint, even with a little bit of cloud cover. 54 in Wenatchee and 57 in Moses Lake. Notice all of our moisture now moving its way out. Even more sunshine expected before the sun goes down tonight. It is a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful Wednesday, and it stays rather pleasant as we head into Thursday. Notice over the Cascades. You're going to see a little bit of rain and snow. For us, it's cloud cover that moves in tomorrow afternoon. And then tomorrow evening, as the sun goes down, we have the chance of a little bit of moisture moving through. You know what happens. You get moisture, you get a little sun shining through. A good shot at seeing a rainbow. I've got faith in it. Tomorrow morning, we start out pretty close to freezing because our clearing skies tonight. But by tomorrow afternoon, we are once again back up in the mid 50s. All right, looking forward to that. Thank you very much. Today, President Biden said Russian President Vladimir Putin is a war criminal, and he laid out his administration's plan now to send additional aid to Ukraine for its defense. It came just hours after the leader of Ukraine, the president there, Vladimir Zelensky, made a compelling call to Congress and the U.S. for more help. Mark Hanrahan is here in the studio tonight to break it all down for us. Hi, Mark. Hey, good afternoon, Whitney. It was quite the moment today. Ukraine's president received a standing ovation from members of the U.S. Congress. Then he made a direct appeal for U.S. help in protecting the skies above his country. Through a translator, Zelensky said that Russia has turned the Ukrainian sky into a, quote, source of death for thousands of people. During his address, he played a video showing Russian attacks and airstrikes pummeling Ukrainian cities. And he even referenced Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s I Have a Dream speech in calling for a humanitarian no-fly zone. Zelensky said if that's not possible, he needs air support and defense systems. I'm addressing the President Biden, I wish you to be the leader of the world. Being the leader of the world means 
to be the leader of peace. President Biden said the U.S. and NATO are opposed to enforcing a no-fly zone, but the White House is sending Ukraine an additional $800 million in military support as part of the nearly $14 billion aid package that Congress approved. It includes 800 anti-aircraft systems to make sure the Ukrainian military can continue, to, can continue to stop the planes and helicopters that have been attacking their people. Today, President Zelensky released a video saying peace talks with Russia were progressing and that Russia's demands are becoming, quote, more realistic. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov, by the way, also said there was a hope that compromise could be reached. If you'd like to learn more links to people to help in Ukraine, just text the word crisis to 509-448-2000 and we'll send those links directly to your phone. Whitney. All right, Mark, thank you very much. And coming up after the break, we'll tell you three things to know about the coronavirus today. That will include the latest subvariant of the Omicron variant, plus an update on Pfizer's efforts on a fourth booster shot. Don't go anywhere. We're back after the break.